Great morning to everybody and welcome to a fresh edition, another edition of the Boiler Room Prayer. It is my privilege to be with each and every one of you this morning. I greet all of you all who are part of the Saturday morning crew, those who are on time every time, those who greet me before I can greet you. Great morning to each and every one of you. I am glad to be in the land of the living, and I pray that you feel the grace of God, the peace of God this morning, the strength of God, and the renewing of your mind in the Lord. And as you know, I'm not here by myself. I'm grateful for intercessors standing by and those who were live with me on the set. Good morning to you. Good morning. Sister Bria, Brother Christopher, Brother Christopher, <laughs> and Minister Jazz, good morning to you. Morning. All right, so this is what I want to talk about. This is March the 16th, 2024. And four years ago, this was a Monday morning after we had just had this amazing fellowship worship service on a Sunday afternoon. And I, I'll never forget this. It's easy to remember because that particular Sunday was Women's Day, March 15th, <laughs> 2020, Women's Day. And our Women's Day speaker, <laughs> in the midst of a lot of things that she conveyed that day, she shared that God was getting ready to read reveal our ministry to the world and that wherever I went, follow, right? So I got crew members remembering this. Um, and she said, if we go to a food line parking lot, you better, you better follow me there. <laughs> food line parking lot. A day later, um, the by act of uh, the governor, uh, our state, along with many other states across the country, was declared uh, shut down. And churches could no longer meet in mass. And the beginning of the pandemic, as we would know it, even though it had been here for some time, uh, had begun. I had just flew into the country that Sunday morning. I had just flew into the country that Sunday morning. I, I don't expect you all to remember that because uh, you all don't often know where I am. <laughs> but the border that I flew into on Sunday morning was closed on Monday. Wow. Isn't that something? Wow. Yeah. And the country that I had flew from the president and his wife had contracted COVID that weekend. So, you know, it was crazy. So um, here we are four years later. But before we go there, fast forward from March 2020 to July 2020. We met in a food line parking lot. We met in a food line parking lot. Do y'all remember that? And I'm sitting here thinking, Lord, will there be at least 300 people that will pop out? And there was definitely over a thousand people. And yes, God did reveal our ministry to the world. God has brought us from some really, really, really tough times. A mighty, a mighty, somebody type that in the chat, a mighty long way. So I just want to reflect because at that time, this time four years ago, the Boiler Room was not broadcasted. And it was definitely not on a set. It was in a sanctuary. And we met and we tarried together in a sanctuary every Saturday morning. And some of you all, y'all didn't come looking like this. Sure did. Y'all. 
<laughs> they came like they had just rolled out of bed, but I couldn't be mad because they made it to prayer. <laughs> but here we are. Who would have ever thought, who would have ever thought it? Who would have ever seen it but God like this? Um, Bonner, reflections from the pandemic. Ooh, I'm just grateful. I'm holding back my tears <laughs> just because I'm just grateful. Um, it was a tough time, not necessarily like because I was going through anything in particular, but it was just a lot going on in the world, like for everybody. And just to stay connected to the source, I'm just so grateful for your leadership in our ministry that we were able to pull through that because it was just a lot that was thrown at people. Like you had to really push past your emotions to stay connected to God. And we didn't stop praying. We didn't stop serving. <laughs> we didn't stop worshiping. We didn't stop doing what God called us to do. And so I'm just grateful to still be a part of those that are here because everybody didn't make it. Everybody didn't make it like they're not still here with us on earth and just people didn't make it through their ministry. Yeah. And so I'm just grateful to yeah. still be here. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get ahead of anybody's comments. I'm coming to you, Chris Owens. But just something that she said that resonates. I, I still meet people, friends, uh, people that I don't know, but that approach me, um, you know, in public places. And, you know, I always inquire when I meet people, whether I know them or not, are you doing all right? And, um, you know, a lot of people uh, signal that they that they have have not returned to their place of worship. You know that uh, since the pandemic, you know, my wife and I, or my family, or me and my kids, you know, we just been kind of virtual. You know, and then you know how casual that's said. Yep. So how casual that's lived. So yes, millions <clears throat> did not make. Ooh. The pandemic was really, really tough. Much like Briss, it was really tough. Um, I remember when, you know, that that notice came out that everything was shutting down. Um, <laughs> I just had the notion that we were exempt. Because, you know, one thing that you always preach and one thing that you always push is that Citadel is going to have our service. We are going to meet and give God what God is owed. We only shut our service down for one, maybe two reasons a year. Outside of them, we gonna have service, and so, and so when you you know put the notice out that you know we had to suspend service, I was like God, I was like I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means, but it was like I I was one of those people that became a virtual victim. And I remember that was one of the first, if not the first sermon you preached after the closing. And. Well, no, it wasn't. I started talking about um, a vision. The virus. Uh -huh. uh, it took no, a vision. It, it took, took a, a virus. It took a virus. Yeah. Yeah. To reveal a vision. But yeah. about midway through that, that year, mm -hmm. I started talking about virtual victims. Yes. Yeah. And I, you admittedly. I was one of them. Were one of them. I was hanging on by two or three strands. <laughs> one strand was God, because oh, I wasn't going to leave him. Mm -hmm. Another strand was the ministry, because like Peter said, where else was I going to go? Mm -hmm. And the last strand was was holding on to you, because I was like, I know that he is my leader. Where am I going to go? It's tough right now. I'm feeling real disconnected because I'm not physically in the sanctuary, but I know I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> so that's why I resonate with Peter so much. You know, as much as I've heard this metaphor hanging on by a thread, um, I've never thought of it like this until this moment. I think about all my suits that have, you know, fancy custom <laughs> buttons, uh -huh. specific ones. You know, the ones that you just cannot run right out to Hancock Fabric and replace. And how, as bad as I need them, uh -huh. 
some of them are hanging on by threads mm -hmm. right now. Not, not fixed, they're hanging. And how, you know, every time I might throw a blazer on uh, with a button that's, 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 you know, really needing repair. Uh -huh. I don't rush to pull it back together. It just hangs sometimes too long. Yeah. And, but I have it fixed in my mentality. I will not lose, I this, button. this button. And I think that what you were saying, it just, it, it helped me to imagine what that looks like, how as bad as we know we need to be repaired, mm -hmm. how long we just kind of yeah. hang on yeah. by threads. With the intention though, I will not get lost. I may look like I'm about to. I may be living like I am, but I know I'm not going to go. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Chris Goldman. So um, the live crew was actually reminiscing this morning, but it's not until, you know, I see your face thinking about it. I remember that, you know, a lot of people around us caught the uh, caught COVID, mm. but you did. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of us caught it more than once, but you haven't caught it once. And I just think like, okay, like the power of God to preserve those who serve him. And you know, how much you mean to this ministry as, you know, the glue, the driver, the visionary, the leader, the teacher, all things. Yeah. And it's like, God really just honored who you were as a person because you were committed. Mm. Like, you found a way out of no way. Like, if it was possible, if God showed you, if God spoke to you, if if he didn't speak to you, you would wait on him to speak oh, to get this vision done, to get the broadcast done. And that's that's what I think about um, in this moment. Well, like, you know, it, it was a miracle through the height of COVID and through the outbreak of COVID in our ministry uh, and in our live crew. You know how the Lord just covered me, you know, through that, the Lord covered me. Mm -hmm. even, as a even though a trickling down from your anointing, even though some of us were in hospitals, we didn't lose anybody. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Yes, Lord, my God, yes. It's, we have people in this crew that are still alive yes. today that were on ventilators yes. back in 2020. But God covered us and God covered, if you're part of the Citadel family, God covered you. I brought you and I through amazingly, miraculously, miraculously. And to him, go ahead on and praise him. Yes, to him we give all the praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. And and some of us are doing better than we were before. So no, um, through that time, the Lord blessed me. You know, my first uh, dealings with COVID was in the fall of 23. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so never, that's not true. Um, but for three years, and uh, when, I, when I tested positive, a day later, a day before I was negative, I tested positive one day, and then a day later, I was negative. So, you know, <laughs> you know, whether it was a false positive or not, I don't know. Let's just assume it was a positive positive it did not last. <laughs> it, it, it did not last. And I, do I think I'm superhuman? No. But, but I do know this much. When you desire to do the will of God, the Lord has a responsibility. If God's word is true, God has a responsibility to take care of your body. You know, God has a responsibility, you know, to, 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 to keep you and preserve you. And, you know, at, during that time, 
I was not asking the Lord for an excuse to go somewhere and not do anything. You know, during that time, I was not seeking an evasion of my responsibilities. I was saying, Lord, I got to serve you. I got to serve you. I got to feed your sheep. You know what I'm saying? I, I have to fulfill the purpose that you have on my life. And that's why when we get tired and when we get weary, we have to remember how it could have been another way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of people call out of work and, you know, as a pastor, people make excuses about not being in church every week. And it's crazy because, you know, when you talk about how everything was closing, we have this expectation that Waffle Houses, McDonald's, and Walmarts, and hospitals will never let us down. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. But we're okay with our houses of worship going offline knowing that we barely meet in them. <laughs> One, maybe if you're really faithful, you will show up two days a week. <laughs> it's crazy that we have our expectation on systems of this world lifted higher than we have our expectations on, on being in God's presence and on God's altar. And so when you really get serious and sincere about your salvation, God will preserve you for God's work until your work is done. Amen. And so I, I just thank God that he made me well enough for my well done. Minister Breeden. Well, I know mentioning getting COVID, I know when I called, I thought it was over because <laughs> everybody thought when you called it, you passed. So, you know, I am grateful. <laughs> But um, what I remember, <laughs> this is it. I, I did. I was like, this is, I'm done. Wow. But um, what I remember as I reflect, like Chris said, just seeing you, I was just thinking like, man, you never let us come down. Like our church was still explosive, even with the few that we did have in the room. And if I was to compare it to other broadcasts from other ministries, like, the spirit was high we had people you know what i'm saying so it was just one thing that you always told us was like you cannot forget about the people because sometimes we would just be caught up in being in here and not really understanding like somebody online really needs to feel like they're in the room and so uh, we just never lost that substance of allowing people to feel like they were still in the room there we've we've heard testimonies of deliverance happening in their home and so it's just so grateful to be a part of that and you we didn't digress we really went higher because even when we did the justice work like it the work never slowed down we progressed but a lot of people took the opportunity to chill like or be at their home and it be quiet and or zoom real quick in 30 minutes but just to see that you had a mega mentality the whole time even when we weren't in a men, in a church so it's just like god i i can't see god not doing something great for us because we didn't allow that to make us um to settle for just less but we just kept going so we, we were trying to keep up yeah. <laughs> while everybody else was you know retreating yeah. we actually leaned into it tomorrow is the anniversary of the formation of the life crew yes. amen <laughs> you know, there was 14 people <laughs> that got a call. <laughs> Come meet with me. <laughs> and Lord, did, 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 did any of us, even myself, realize what I was asking your hand? <laughs> oh, God. You know, some long drawn out really tough relationship that actually has not been broken we've transitioned a few people but i think you know 85 90 percent of our live crew from four years ago is still intact so uh brother elijah will you pan to some of the live crew that's present this morning we have some missing um but uh, for valid reasons but just pan to the live crew and we certainly thank god for them uh, on the fourth anniversary of, of their work hallelujah amen still still kicking still moving still serving 
still in the race. And no, we have not forgotten about all of you. Uh, it's really important for us to understand that this space was created, not so that we could be distant, but so that we could be even closer. And I look forward to the day when Boiler Room Prayer will be back in the sanctuary and we can roll around on the altar <laughs> or Saturday morning uh, or, you know, be in the presence with, uh, you know, Levites on instruments and just worshiping and praying and praying and worshiping. Um, and I know that day is soon to come. Um, but I surely thank God for helping us to reimagine um, how we could continue, amen, the ministry of the Boiler Room. So happy anniversary to the former Corona crew. Remember that? It was the Corona crew. <laughs> Don't we thank God for bringing up, you know, <laughs> new life, evolution, now the live crew. And I want to say happy anniversary to all of you all who survived COVID with us, the whole Citadel family our survivors. To God be all the glory. Amen. So uh, if you haven't already, invite somebody to the Boiler Room Prayer. And uh, again, I welcome you if you're just joining us since I, I greeted you earlier. Welcome to the Boiler Room Prayer. Amen. We're on the cusp of spring. I'm still waiting for some snow in the southeast. I'm still, I just have my faith. I got my faith held high. I believe in God for some snow. You know, they had a huge snowstorm in Denver, Colorado this week. You know, I'm just believing the Holy Spirit is just, he can do anything. He can do anything. He can do anything. Uh, but when I got the colors for uh, uh, Boiler Room this morning, I said, okay, this is real springish. Somebody ain't in the spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Nonetheless, I want to go to our shower of scriptures. If you haven't already, I encourage you to text your prayer request to 336-898-9946. We are standing by to receive them and I'm standing by to record them so that um, I can enter it in my uh, prayer, uh, my, my prayer log. And, and I want to make sure that we touch and agree with your requests before we close on that this morning. Um, Brother Christopher Owens, where are you taking us in the word? We are going to James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 and verse 12. And it reads, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. God blesses those who patiently endures testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Amen. Brother, I'm sorry, Sister Bria Potter, where are you taking us in the word this morning? So I will be reading from Philippians 2. Um, this is the scripture that says, um, let this mind, which was also in Christ Jesus being you. But I'm going to be reading the Amplified Version. And it says, have this same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example in selfless humility, who, although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God, as one with him possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted, as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it, but emptied himself without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine equality and his rightful dignity. By assuming the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, he became completely human, but was without sin, being fully God and fully man. After he was found, in terms of his outward appearance as a man, for a divinely appointed time, he humbled himself still further by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
For this reason also, because he obeyed and so completely humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in submission of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess and openly acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, sovereign God, sovereign God to the glory of God the Father. So then, this is the last verse, my dear ones, just as you have always obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation, that is, cultivate it, bring it to full effect, actively pursue spiritual maturity with all inspired fear and trembling use serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend god or discredit the name of christ that was verse 5 through 12 but you know the amplified breaks everything down amen the amplified version does just that <laughs> it amplifies <laughs> But for a very good reason, I thank God for greater understanding and greater insight um, on a very familiar passage of scripture, familiar um, Philippians chapter 2. Minister Breeden, where are you taking us? I'll be taking us from Psalms 145. I will exalt you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty works. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing your righteousness. Psalms 145, 1 through 7. Hallelujah. Goldman? Um, I would be coming from Joshua 6, starting at verse 15. On the seventh day, the Israelites got up at dawn and marched around the town as they had done before. But this time, they ran around the town seven times. The seventh time around, as the priests sounded the long blast on their horns, Joshua commanded the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the town. Jericho and everything in it must be completely destroyed as an offering to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute and the others in her house will be spared, for she protected our spies. Do not take anything set apart for destruction, or you yourselves will be completely destroyed, and you will bring trouble on the camp of Israel. And that's my reading. Amen. All right. All right. Get ready to shout. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 91. I want to return to this passage of scripture that guided us through the pandemic of 2020. Um, this was the text that I lifted up on the first Sunday after we had uh, gone into our um, shutdown. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, God is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust, surely. He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. God shall cover you with God's feathers and under God's wings shall you trust. God's truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the test pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked because you have made the Lord your refuge. Because you have made the Lord your habitation, even the most high. There shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. 
for God shall give God's angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands. This is what God did for us. Lest you dash your foot against the stone. And I, you know, I want to stop right there and help everybody to understand exactly what this means. That even though there is evil all around us, plagues all around us, even though these temptations exist all around us, the closer you get to God, the closer you are to being protected by God. And so, (laughs) you know, the scripture says that he will cover us with his wings and with his feathers. Look at verse four. And his truth shall be your shield and your buckler. That's crazy because there's two different coverings. There's a physical covering, the wings of the Lord. But then there's a spiritual covering. And the spirit hovers closer to you than the wings of God. The spiritual covering is in God's truth. But God's truth will only cover you if you stay under God's truth. Because in verse four, it's sorry, verse 11, it says he'll give his angels charge over us to keep us. And then it says in verse 12, unless you do something, unless you dash your foot upon a stone. So if you want to fall, you fall from the covering of God. I don't, I don't ever believe that we fall from God's grace. I cannot, I do not like it when people say a fall from grace. He fell from grace. She fell from grace. I don't believe that because I, I just don't know. I don't see in the word of God how you can fall from grace. You don't even know where grace is. Grace is in your fall. But right here, it helps us to understand if you will, if you choose to stay with me, even if your way gets rocky, Uh if you choose to stay with me, I have a covering for you. I have a covering that will preserve you when disease is all around you. I have a covering that will keep you when everything else is being unkept. I I have a covering with you, but you have to make sure that it is your will. I thank God that God blessed us with this text to guide us through some of the most tumultuous times of our lived experience. Perhaps we'll never ever go through what we've been through again, but we have the the joy from that experience that we're now we're now stronger, we're now wiser, and we are now better. In Jesus' name. Good morning to each and every one of you, and good morning, Holy Spirit. Chris Owens is going to lead us out in prayer, followed by other intercessors. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us the gift of life, health, and strength, God. We thank you because you woke us up, God. For some reason, you decided that by some metric, we were deserving or worthy enough to open our eyes and breathe the breath of life today, God. And everybody didn't get that gift today. So we, we dare not take it for granted. God, we thank you because you have showed us again that you do love us and you do care for us. God, you continue to show us that you really have your hands on us. You've never taken your hands off of us, God. Even when times seem rough or times seem strange, God, we have the understanding that you are working in the background. God, we thank you because even though we don't see your work, we can feel your work. God, we can feel that you're moving. We can feel that you're working some things out, God. We know that you love us enough 
not to let things get too far out of hand, God. So we know that when we get that feeling that, you know, something just isn't right here, we know that that's your Holy Spirit telling us to hold on because there's something in the works. God, we thank you because you have given us a way out of our situations, God, when we have placed ourselves in these situations that we should not have ever been in, God, you love us enough to give us that ram in the bush. God, you love us enough to help us out of the things that we did not involve you into us being into. God, we dare not move any forward in this prayer without asking for your forgiveness, God. God, there are things that we've done this week that we shouldn't have. There are things that we've said that we shouldn't have. There are ways that we thought and, and moves that we consider, God, that we shouldn't even have entertained the thought of. And we know that they have affected our actions, God. So we're asking that you forgive us right now, God, from the things that did not make you smile. God, we don't just want your forgiveness, but we want your help so that we can repent, God. We don't want to have to keep apologizing and being sorry and asking for forgiveness for the same things over and over and over again. God, we need your help to repent from these things, God. We don't want to have to keep coming to you for these things, God. We want to come to you with new problems, God. We want to be able to come to you with new stresses, God, but not the same stresses that we've been dealing with for years and years, God. So God, whatever it is that we need to do, God, tell us what we need to do, God, and give us give us the strength and the, the courage to actually take the first step, God, because we know that when we take the first, God, you have no problem taking the next step with us. God, we need your help. We need your help because if we are to be your hands and your feet in the earth, if we are to be the Bible that people see, if we are to be the representation that most people have of what God is and what you're all about, God, we need your help to uphold that standard. God, this is a rough world that we're living in, and Jesus, you know it best because you walked it, but this is a rough world. It's a rough world, and we need your help, God, to keep the banner lifted God we need your help to make sure that we keep the joy of the Lord in our heart and God that the river that you've placed inside of us flows God we need your help and we know that you can give it to us God God we love you because you have showed us that it doesn't matter what's going on you're there you're there thank you Lord for being there in Jesus name Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah to the most high God. Lord, you are God. You are king of kings. You are Lord of lords. You are the alpha and the omega. You are the beginning and the end. You're the one who was, who is, and who is to come. You're the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. You are the God of our lives. You are Jehovah. You're Adonai. You're Yahweh. You are an everlasting lasting God. There is nobody like you in all of the earth. We can search high, we can look low, we can go left or right, but there is nobody who is greater than you. There is nobody stronger. There is nobody wiser. You are the only true wise and living God. You are the one who sent your son to die for our sins. You sent him with a purpose. You sent him to be the propitiation for our sins or that we may be forgiven that we don't have to face death for our sins, but we can have the opportunity to experience forgiveness. We thank you for your redemption, Jesus. We thank you for being our Messiah, for being our teacher, for being the one who is the bread of life. Thank you so much, oh God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that you did not just leave us here, but you sent your Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us, to speak to us. Your Holy Spirit is the breath of the Almighty. Your Holy Spirit is the voice of the Almighty. Your Holy Spirit is the spirit of justice, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of love. We're so grateful that you didn't just leave us here with no direction, no guide. There are many times and many days where we feel like there is no direction or there is no, no way that we can go, but we know that we can lean to your understanding, not to our own, Lord. We're grateful for the knowledge that you have given us, that you have presented 
to us in your word, Lord. You were very clear in your word. You made it so that we can have a way, we can have a wealth of knowledge that we don't have to be ignorant, that we don't have to sit here and, and perish behind our ignorance, Lord, but that we have access to the knowledge and the wisdom. You said greater work shall we do, Lord, and sometimes we don't see ourselves worthy, but it's not about what we see, Lord. It's about what you said in your word, what you said about each and every one of us, what you declared over our lives. You said that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, so how dare we believe any lie of the enemy that says otherwise. Satan, we remind you that you are up under our feet, that you have no rule, no reign, no power, no authority in our lives. You are one who has, has continued to roam around the earth and seeking whom you may devour, but it will not be us in the mighty name of Jesus. We are those, we are they that will stand in the gap for these, uh, these people that are connected to us. We will stand in the gap. Lord, we thank you so much that you have given us the power and the authority, the same power and authority that you gave the disciples, Lord. We're so grateful that you are giving it to us, that you have given it to us, that we have that same access, Lord. We're grateful that you didn't just stop there, but that you continue the legacy. You continue your legacy through us. We were created in your image and in your likeness, Lord. It's an honor and a privilege, God, to be able to serve you in the capacity that you have allowed us to do so, Lord. You are the one who has made us able. You are the one who has given us the activity and the mobility of our limbs, God. So with that, we will give it back to you, Lord. Whatever it is that you have blessed us with, we give it back to you. We give our minds back to you. We give our hearts back to you. Lord, we give our creative, our creativeness back to you, Lord, the things and the talents and the gifts that you have given us. We will use it for your glory, God. If you've given us the gift to speak, God, we will speak unto your name. We will decree and declare who you are. We will be unashamed, Lord. We know that you have continued to rest on the just and the unjust, Lord. We are grateful that you are pouring out your spirit on all flesh, God, that we are included in that. You didn't leave anybody out, God. You gave everybody the opportunity. You said in your word that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are king, you are God, you are ruler. Lord, we're so grateful. We are praying this morning that we will call upon your name for our healing, that we will call upon your name for our deliverance, that we will call upon your name for our salvation in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the only one who can save. You are the only one who can heal. You are the only one who can deliver. Lord, let us not believe what the enemy says. Let us not believe what the report says because you always have the final say. No matter what it is, Lord, we are believing you for hard things, God, because we know that you can do the easy things. We know that you can pay our bills. It's already done. Lord, we know that you can heal us. It's already done. But Lord, whatever it is, Lord, we're believing you for things happening across the world. We may not ever enter into that territory, Lord, but we know that you can do it because you are God. So we're believing you to heal across the land, not just in North Carolina, not just in America, Lord, but everywhere, God. We're believing you that you can deliver people from demons that they don't even know that they're dealing with. They haven't even identified it as a demon, Lord, but we're praying that you would have your way, that you would intervene on their behalf because there's a citadel somewhere praying on a broadcast, Lord, on a Saturday morning. We're believing that you you can have your way and that you can do all things, God. There is nothing that is too hard for you. Lord, we're praying that you would step in for that family that needs you, for the people that need you, God. We're just praying and trusting and believing that you will have your way above all else, God, that you will continue to do what you do, and that is to do all things, Lord. We're so grateful. We love you. We honor you. We adore you, and it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. God, we give your name all the praise, glory, and honor on this Saturday morning. Lord, we thank you right now that you have shined your face upon us, that we're able to praise your name, God, that we're able to move our bodies. Lord, we come to you right now just praying over all ministries, God. We ask that you would be with every pastor, every minister, every evangelist, every teacher, every uh, uh, worker, God. We're just asking that you would just pour your spirit within them, Lord. We don't get 
get enough credit for the things that we do, how we show up for people, how we deliver, how we set free, how we pray. God, we even our leaders, our pastors, Lord, that there are a lot of scrutiny under our magnifying glass. God, we come to you right now. Just your protection will be over them. That every sickness that tries to attach itself to them cannot work. God, we pray against every spirit, every demon that wants to twist their tongues, God, that want to make them and expose them. Lord, Father, we come to you right now just asking that you will wrap your arms around them. Lord, that everything that they do for the work of the Lord, Lord, that it will just continue to strengthen them, that the people will help and pour into their leaders, God. We come to you right now as people are fading away from ministry, as people are throwing in the towel, Lord, that there will still be people that slip up the bloodstained banner, that there will still be people that speak the words of faith. God, that they will allow your covering to come over each and every one of us, that they will allow your anointing to fall fresh upon us. And Lord, that we don't show up to this fake, but Lord, let us be real right now. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that everything that wants to attach itself to us cannot work, God. That when we see the enemy, for he has no new tricks, that we will tell him that he has to go back to the pits of hell. Lord, it's time to take up the covenant. It is time to take up the cross like we have learned to take up this cross daily. Lord, let us continue to see your works and your will, your signs, your miracles, and your wonders. That as we speak, as we read the word, that we'll believe it for ourselves. That we will believe that you are a God that shows up. That we'll believe that you are the one, our knight in shiny armor. That we'll believe you're Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. That we will believe every in everything that is just not like you, God. That we will push it by the wayside. We come to you just asking that you will be in every person that is given up in their heart and mind. That is given up in their faith, God. That is just given up all the way over because of the news, Lord. We want you to have your way and that your face is shown mighty in each and every one of our lives. God, we give your name all the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we do pray. Hallelujah. To our almighty God, we give our almighty praise. God, because you're worthy. God, we just want to say thank you for journeying with us, Lord, for leading us and showing us your way, oh God, for helping us, God, to understand the things that we can't understand. Lord, because all of our lives we've been lying to ourselves. God, we've been we've been shown a different society, a different world, a world that the enemy wants us to believe in. Oh God, but you come to set us free, Lord. God, you come, God, that um, the things that could drive us crazy, the things that can make us delusional, God, that you said that that is not how you called us, Lord, but you called us, God, to be set apart, God, to see your truth and to live under it, oh God. God, I just want to praise you right now, Father God, for all the things that you have done, because even when we uh, mistook you, even when we turned our backs on you, God, when we, we looked the other direction, God, you were right there calling on our names, God, telling us, God, that that is not the way, that, that is not the path that you have laid out for us, that is not what you had, had planned for us or in store for us, but even when we continue down that path, God, you said all things will work together for the good of those who loved you, and God, just with, you put a sincerity in us, God, that we did not have, oh God, you gave us a spirit that we did not, that we did not know God, but you helped us to grow in your spirit, to grow in maturity, Lord God. God, you gave us a community to be built up, Lord. Oh God, we just want to say thank you. God, because even when we were sick and, and even people who are laying up in hospital or, or who are hungry, God, they know of you. God, accepting a form of godliness but denying your power. Oh, God, we call on your name. God, that your spirit will come through the land like a revival. God, send a revival in this land, oh, Jesus. God, that your Holy Spirit will be felt, God, that we're not holding on. We don't have to question that, that this is what you are doing, God, that a form, of God, a form of Christianity would not just persevere, but the true form, God, that your spirit, God, would not be denied, that your power would not be denied. God, we're so sick of holding on to things that you're calling for, God. God, going to the surface, God, but we want to go deeper. We want to go deeper, God. We want to surrender the things that we've been holding on to, the strongholds that's been built up in our lives, God. We're calling on your power to break it down. God, things that we have been denying for so long, God, we want to reveal the Lord, God. We're calling on your spirit all through the land, God. In the land, God, send your spirit to some people, God, who may not have never even had the chance, God, to know you, God, who may have heard, who may have seen some version of you, but not the real you, God, who, God, who are so wrapped up in church hurt, God, they may have denied you. God, who has, God, just seen some twisted version of you, Lord God. God, who may just have not been able to have that experience. God, your spirit can reach all things, God. You can be all things to all people, Lord. We sin, God, we'll call on your spirit, God. We'll place in your demand, God, on children without mothers and fathers. God, on people, God, who are who are lost their brothers and sisters. God, those who are lost connection to their family. God, those who are less lost connection to their ground, to their root, Lord God. We're calling on your spirit, God, to do all things well, God. Because, God, even though 
other society, even though this world, God can do things we don't approve of. God, this is not the end goal. God, we're living to live again in your, and you can do all things, God. So we're seeking your kingdom. We're seeking your kingdom, God. And even though your kingdom is to come, God, we're still asking for a little bit of your kingdom here, God. God, that you can dwell in us and you can live in us, God. That we can represent who you really are, God. Lord, transform us, God. You, God, the word for the house was that from, Gen from Genesis to Revelation, God, there is transformation. God, we're clinging on to your word, Lord, God, that you can reveal a little bit more about you, God, a little bit more than what we had, a little bit more than what we had in the second ago, that every time we read your word, God, that we won't be, that we won't get tired of it, we won't get wearied of it, but we'll seek you earnestly, Lord, God. God, reveal to us your spirit, reveal to us your truth and your understanding, God. God, help us not to die off in ignorance, for you said your people perish for a lack of knowledge. God, we don't want to be ignorant. God, we don't want to be foolish. We don't want to be stupid in you, Lord, God, and even though we make foolish mistakes, God, we're asking you, God, to correct us in your love and your grace, the grace that that corrects, the grace that 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 steers. God, God, spare not the rod, but chastise us as sons and daughters of the living God. Oh God, we give you praise and glory for the things that you're doing in this house and for the houses all through the land. God, that your kingdom, God, will persevere; it shall never be defeated. In the name of my, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I have received prayer requests for healing this morning. Sister Mother Coleman, we're going to lift her up. We need God to heal her shoulder. I met with the sister last night, healing for her shoulder. I ran into a sister last night. We believe in God for healing right now. Anybody that's dealing with joint pain, anybody that's dealing with arthritis, anybody that's dealing with uh, degenerative uh, issues with their bones. I'm asking God to heal your body, to strengthen your bones right now. In the name of Jesus, uh, Dr. Chris, I'm praying for you that God will cause your uh, walking ability to, to fully recover, that you will be restored. Praying for your sciatica nerve. Uh, I'm praying for Wallace. Uh, uh, to be delivered and healed in this cancer. I'm praying for uh, uh, Dwenda to be delivered and healed through this cancer, um, to, through, through your bout and your battle, and we're gonna fight with you. Glory to God, we're gonna fight with you, we're gonna fight with you, we're gonna fight with you. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. I'm believing the Lord this morning for a recovery. Amen for Sister Tyke this morning, just total recovery. I thank God for a good report earlier this week. Hallelujah to God. I'm praying this morning, amen, with a sister who is just asking the Lord for clarity and to remove all insecurities. I'm praying for a sister right now who's asking the Lord for um, uh, just uh, rescue in school just this semester. And I woke up this morning and the Holy Spirit said, pray for the college students. Amen. Those of you all who are passing through semesters right now, uh, this right here, this, this is the breaking point right here. And my prayer is that you will not break, but that you will break through that these, this last six to eight weeks of this semester will be your most productive weeks. That this last six to eight weeks of this semester, that you will find your strength. Hallelujah, that you will find your focus. In the name of Jesus, that you will recover from every mistake, and every bad judgment that you have made, that you have, have pleaded to the Lord, that you will turn your mind, body, and soul over to the Lord. I can't ask God for miracles and you stay the same. Hallelujah, did y'all hear me? I cannot ask God to help you with your assignments and your mind don't change. Glory to God, hallelujah. The Bible said faith without works is dead. And so I believe God in my faith, I need you to work the work. 
And I need you to not be so focused on doing everything that you want to do in the natural that you accomplish nothing in the spiritual. And so I need you to find some time to regain your focus so that faith can help you in your natural work while you put on a restoration of your spiritual work. And so God, I'm just praying right now for every student that is just in trouble. <laughs> Let me just make it clear. Let me just make it plain. Every student that is in trouble this morning, every student that needs to take on help from the Holy Ghost, I'm praying that, glory to God, the pressure on your shoulders will be alleviated and that you will come into your righteous mind and that you, your anxieties will be curbed, that God will begin to lift the burden, hallelujah, and that you will be in control of your time, that you will be in control of your energy, that you will be in control of your productivity, and that you will put nothing in the way of God. There are students that have gone home in a body bag this semester, but God has blessed you to survive. And now I'm believing that you won't just live, but that you will thrive. Hallelujah. And so I'm just praying for you this morning intensely. The Holy Spirit told me to do that. I'm praying right now. Glory to God. Amen. For Sister Faith. I'm praying right now. Glory to God. Amen. For Sister Loretta. Glory to God. I'm praying right now for Brother Ezekiel. I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus for Sister Sade. I'm praying right now for Brother Harold. I'm praying right now for Sister Cher. Glory to God. If I called your name name out. Hallelujah. Sometimes situations are too personal. But if I called your name out, whatever it is that you need God to do, I am touching and agreeing with you. Glory to God that by faith it shall be done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The scripture says, let it be done according to your faith. Hallelujah. And so if you are desperate this morning for destiny, I tell you right now, the Holy Spirit is working on your problem. The Holy Spirit is restoring your mind, your body and your soul in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. There, the, the scripture this morning, glory to God, hallelujah, tells us in verse 14, I didn't even get to this, Psalm 91 verse 14, that God's love is upon us and therefore he will deliver us. Glory to God, hallelujah. It says here that he shall give angels charge to keep watch over us in all our ways and that the angels will bear you up in their hands. I just want you to know right now that God is lifting somebody. If I called your name, God is lifting you. Hallelujah, if you feel the spirit of God, God is lifting you. The Bible said that he will send angels to keep charge over you, but the angels won't sit with you. The angels will pick you up. And the Lebashaya, verse 12 said that the angels will bear you up in their hands. Hallelujah, that the angels will bear you up in their hands. I come to speak a resurrection to somebody's situation, a resurrection to somebody's body, a resurrection to somebody's business, a resurrection to somebody's education, a resurrection to somebody's spirit, a resurrection to somebody's emotions, a resurrection to somebody's finances, a resurrection to somebody's family in the name of Jesus because the angels of God are bearing you up and it says that he that they are doing this for a very good reason because he has set his love upon you I want you to understand that the love of God is 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 not just spiritual it is it is manifesting in the natural that you will be healed because his love is upon you that you will be delivered from failure because he loves you so much that you will be rescued today hallelujah he shall call me verse 14 15 and I will answer the scripture says that he shall call upon you and you will answer glory to God all you got to do is just give God a yes this morning give God a yes this morning you've been in too much trouble you don't even know what to say you just just say yes Lord you in so much pain you don't even know what to pray just say yes Lord 
Yes, Lord. And God, we just, we send these prayers out because there are people who are hostages this morning. The Lord told me several, several months ago, start praying for Haiti. Now Haiti is in breaking news. Glory to God. Amen. We've been praying for Haiti for months. Glory to God. We've been praying for Haiti as long as we've been praying for Israel and Ukraine. I pray in Jesus' name, God, that there will be rescue in Jesus' name for every hostage in the war, God, for every soldier that is fighting in active duty right now, God, but for the innocent people in these foreign lands and in these countries that are in trouble, don't have food, don't have water, don't have clothes, don't have the necessities, and perhaps what's worse than that is don't have any peace in the name of Jesus. God, I pray right now, God, for rescue and rehabilitation in the name of Jesus. You said the strong shall bear the infirmity of the weak. The strong shall bear the infirmity of the weak. God, we are strengthened this morning. Some of us are claiming to be hungry and it's not because we can't find food. It's because we hadn't got to it yet. But there is somebody that's waking up that has no means. Glory to God. They have no means. They would be satisfied with just clean drinking water. God, I pray this morning right now. Hallelujah. In our strength, God. Hallelujah, God, that you was taking our prayer and that you will rescue and that you will heal and that you will provide for people that are desperate this morning for their necessities. In the name of Jesus, we call on the Jireh, Jehovah Jireh. We call on Jehovah Jireh. In the name of Jesus, glory to God, somebody is too weak to pray. That's all right, my brother. That's all right, my sister. We are bearing you up this morning. We're sending a host of angels to rescue you this morning in the name of Jesus somebody glory to God is in ICU somebody's body is racked with pain this morning we're sending the distant deliverer glory to God we're sending Oboshiah Jehovah Rapha we are sending the bomb glory to God into your body into the same space with you glory to God to heal you and deliver you and I believe in Jesus name that every person who sent a prayer request that the Lord is strengthening your situation. Hallelujah. And or he is strengthening you in the situation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I said God is strengthening you in the matter. Glory to God. He is strengthening you. He is delivering you. He is making you well able. Weeping may endure for a night. Glory to God, but joy comes in the morning. And I'm believing God right now for a restoration of mind, body, and soul in Jesus' name. We love you, God. We praise you. We praise you in advance. Some of us have back praise. God has, what the things that we're praying about, God already did it. God did it for you this week. God did it for you this month. God did it for you early this year. And you just need to give God a hallelujah praise to seal this prayer in Jesus' name. Satan, we curse you. We bind you up. We pull you down. We plead the blood of Jesus Christ. We praise the name of Jesus Christ. And we cast you down. We are loved of God and we are saved and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb of God. Yahweh, Yeshua, Jehovah God and his son Jesus. And we have received the power of God through the strength of God's Holy Spirit. And we curse you, devil, every demon, every witch, every warlock and we curse you and we renounce you and we rebuke you and we bind you up and we loose God's love we loose the peace of the Lord the healing of God's power the virtue of Christ's strength in Jesus name hallelujah we're praying for the Citadel Church and every transition that we have to make, we are praying that we will become stronger and not weaker. 
that we will be strengthened by these things, that people will come from the north, south, east, and west to find us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. faith I write over every prayer request and I pronounce over every situation case closed in Jesus name hallelujah glory to God the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you is our continual prayer thank you to everyone who always tune in and if you want to sow into our ministry we would be more than happy to receive any seed offerings any support that you send towards our way we endeavor to be constant and we're standing on kingdom business this year. Amen. So I just want to say thank you so much for all of our supporters, for all of our members, our tithers. Amen. Those from near and far, God bless you. Just know that God loves you and there is nothing that you or the devil can do about it. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you.